Number 10, twins named Jim. Okay, we'll kick this part two off on a lighter note. This one gets a little dark, so we'll ease our way in, you know? The twins named Jim. Okay, that sounds like a 2026 comedy hit already. Back in 1979, a set of twins were reunited when they were 39 years old at the time. This was, of course, a big moment in their lives. For 37 years, they barely knew of each other's existence. Then when they finally met, the long lost twins had more in common than they could have ever thought. For starters, both had been named Jim. I spoiled that in the fun title earlier, but their adoptive parents both named the lads Jim. That's insane. Jim? Like of all names, really? And both Jims just happened to love math and carpentry. Both also had jobs and security, and both also had ex-wives named Linda. And they both since married a woman named Betty. This is incredible. This isn't like, what? Imagine meeting another you, and he's like, oh yeah, I also love knitting and Autobots. What are the odds? No, that's too eerie. You're an alien clone. Something's afoot here. Get out of here. Not just meeting a long lost twin at 40. No way. Number nine, Stephen Hawking. Time is relative and fascinating and all that confusing stuff. There's so many components of our universe that we still don't even understand. James Webb is out here making people turn to atheists all of a sudden. The universe is bigger than we all think, yet somehow it still gives us these once in a lifetime coincidences. Or as I say, <laughs> Stephen Hawking's death occurred on Einstein's 139th birthday, which is also Galileo's 300th death day, and also Pi Day. This was March 14th. My dad has the same birthday as Daniel Radcliffe and they're both wizards, so I don't know. Just saying, these birthday coincidences are getting out of hand. Coincidences, coincidences, coincidences. There it is, he's got it. Number eight, atomic survivor. On August 6th and 9th, 1945, the United States detonated two nuclear explosives over the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This of course was devastating. The results in this reaction, the blast and the radiation they both caused took the lives of nearly 90,000 people. It was horrible. But in 2009, the Japanese government confirms that there was at least one man who was in each city on both both days of the reactions, and he lived to tell the tale. On August 6, Satamu Yamaguchi was in Hiroshima on a business trip. As I was walking alone, I heard the sound of a plane. Just one, he told a British newspaper. I looked up in the sky and I saw the B-29 and it dropped two parachutes. I was looking up into the sky at them and suddenly it was like a flash of magnesium, a great flash in the sky, and I was blown over just like that. And by August 9th, he had returned home to Nagasaki only to experience the trauma for a second time. Despite the double radiation exposure, Yamaguchi lived to be 93 years old, which is incredible. He sadly passed away from stomach cancer. Number seven, Julianne Kopka. Miss Julianne has a two for one when it comes to survival stories. I had to include it. Her story starts out on Christmas Eve, a lovely day, 1971, when she was just a teenager and she was on Lanza Flight 508. Now the plane was struck by lightning, which is an actual nightmare situation that I didn't know could happen. And this led to the plane starting to disintegrate midair. I don't even, yeah. It was all bad. And what felt like the blink of an eye for Julianne, she found herself still strapped to her seat two miles above the Peruvian rainforest. She was injured, of course, full of bruises, a broken collarbone, but she was alive after she landed. And in fact, she was the only person who had been on the flight that was still alive. Just fell out of a plane and lived to tell. That is crazy. That is bad insane. But it's like you're out of the fire into the frying pan at this point, right? Now you're in the wilderness all alone with no food. Just, you know, a little bit of candy, if anything, from the plane. Julianne had found a small stream which she began to wade in downstream. She traveled along it. And the insects in the jungle were eating her alive. And sorry, this next part is gross, but maggots had infected her arm. It was like bad, worse, even worse. Now we're flowing down a river and maggots are eating me. Uh, this is incredible. Julianne ended up coming across a sort of encampment where she found a few supplies and she was so smart and was able to give herself a little bit of first aid, which included pouring gasoline on the infected arm, which then led to all the you know disgusting bugs and maggots leaving it. Cause they're like, hey, I'm not a fan of gasoline. Lunch is over, see you later. And then just a few hours later, a few lumber workers found her and they gave her more first aid treatment and took her to an area that was more populated where she was then airlifted for medical treatment. Now in 2000, her story was told through the documentary titled Wings of Hope, which was directed by Werner Herzog, who particularly took interest in the story because one, it's obviously incredible as I was just explaining it. I read this and I'm like, it's crazy. But two, Werner Herzog also had a seat booked on that flight and he would have been on that same flight if it wasn't for a last minute change of plans. I can't even, that should be number one, really. Number six, Comet family. Okay, this one's good. The odds of being hit or killed by a meteor are one in two million or something like that, right? It's crazy. But even so, back in 1954, residents in Talladega County, Alabama, noticed a ball of fire heading towards the earth. Now, back then we didn't have Twitter, right? We couldn't warn anybody that a meteor was possibly gonna hit us. We also really didn't know if it was gonna hit or not or how big it was, so it was alarming. Especially for Anne Elizabeth Hodges, who got hit 
by said space rock. Yeah, she only got grazed, but with these odds, it's still possible. Wild. Now, cut to recent history, the Comet family in France. Their house was hit by a meteor. I'll say that again. The Comet family was hit by a you get it, there we go. As somebody with the last name McWaters, I'm a little worried that I might drown now. I don't know, last names seem to be a little bit of a tip off, it seems. And number five, World Cup. An episode from The Simpsons back in 1997 called The Cartridge Family shows Mexico and Portugal going head to head in football. Like, you know, like soccer football, not like, you know, football, football, you get it. Springfield residents are told to go see this match to determine which nation is the greatest on earth, Mexico or Portugal. So when the 2018 World Cup then rolled around much later, rolled around, pun intended, fans were excited that this was now coming true, but at the same time had a laugh determining that Ronaldo must have missed that penalty intentionally so that the prediction would come true. That's like the theory now that Ronaldo missed to make the Simpsons correct. A lot of theories for that one, it's always fun. But recently it's been announced that Qatar will host a tournament in November and December 2022, rather than usual June, July dates. Another World Cup, another chance for the Simpsons to add another prediction to their already impressive list. That's a creepy show. I have another Simpsons one coming up, but we'll see. Number four, Mars Life. Eh, we're back, there it is. There's the next Simpson one, that, that fast, there we go. Let me ask you lovely people a question. If you could go to Mars right now with like three of your friends, would you do it? Keep in mind it's really boring, and unless you're a astronaut botanist like Matt Damon, you'll probably have a rough go. But in the future, would you do it? I would, I'd go. I'd go with like one person, you know? Force too many, that's too much. Going to Mars might be as simple as going to the mall. Apparently, The Simpsons have an episode where they show a family visit to the big red planet come 2051. But honestly, I feel like we're gonna get there a lot sooner. SpaceX is already planning to send people out there. It's a quick, you know, nine month trip, so make sure your phone's charged. But it's actually more beneficial for the team to travel during these peak times, in the 2030s and in the 2050s. Because during these years, trips to the planet will be shorter and they'll coincide with periods of the solar maximum. So while this one may or may not come true in 2022, well, let me tell you, it's right around the corner. Or maybe in 2050. Who knows? Number three, Titanic inspection card. This inspection card once belonged to a woman named Marion Meanwell. And you're probably thinking, eh, what could possibly be worrisome or, you know, creepy about an inspection card? Well, it shows how Marion was not intended to be on the Titanic that fateful day, but by some turn of events, she unfortunately found herself as one of the passengers. The card shows that she was originally meant to be traveling on a ship called the Majestic, and for some reason, the trip she originally had planned was delayed, and now she instead was assigned to the ill-fated Titanic. The eerie part is, you can see See the word majestic was crossed out on her card, which then shows us the change in plans. If only people were able to see what was about to strike and they could have somehow warned her. That's the creepy thing about these coincidences. Sometimes they're just bad, you know? You could fall out of a plane and have maggots all over you and survive, or you could go from one cursed ship to another. Ah, number two, Edgar Allan Poe. Okay, this is a story that actually convinced me that Edgar Allan Poe is for real a time traveler, so buckle up, grab a soda. Because two separate stories that he wrote both turned out to be exceptionally true and real, but not until after they had been written. Yeah, it's a good one. Firstly, Poe's only completed novel was published in 1838, and it tells the tale of mutiny on a whaling ship lost at sea. These men on a ship realize that they're doomed and need to resort to extreme measures in order to stay alive. So they begin drawing straws to see who they're going to sacrifice to save food. A boy named Richard Parker drew the shortest straw and therefore became the next meal. Dark, let's move on. Let's fast forward to 46 years now to 1884, and in real life also, I might add. There are now four men who have been set adrift after the sinking of a yacht. These men found themselves in a similar predicament to the novels, and I kid you not, they ended up taking the same route and elected to sacrifice a cabin boy. A cabin boy also named Richard Parker. Odd, right? Okay. Cut to 1840, Poe penned the gruesome story, The Businessman, in which the narrator suffers a traumatic head injury in his youth, and then later a violent life follows. The weird thing about this story is that Edgar Allan Poe fully understood, or so it seemed, frontal lobe injury. Now this was long before it was ever even studied or looked at, right? This this type of study didn't arrive until 1848. An actual neurologist, Eric Altschuler, recently wrote how there's a dozen symptoms and he knew every single one. It's so exact and it's so weird, it's like he had a time machine, end quote. Yeah, it's almost like he had a time machine. Did he? And finally, number one, Simpsons dome in real life. Yep, yeah, this one's gonna hit home, let's do it. This one's gonna hit dome. That didn't work. 
For this one, we're looking at The Simpsons movie, which still holds up. It's a fun time. But even over the pandemic, I saw personal domes come to life, right? It was so weird. Restaurants were making these like weird tents on sidewalks just to stay in business. But an even bigger idea came long before this. Back in the 70s, there were talks about putting a dome over Manhattan, this massive dome over Midtown that regulates weather and pollution, all that good stuff. Now, if that had been built, imagine what we would have done with it during the initial breakout during this pandemic. It would have been madness. And then in 2010, later on, the city called Eco City 2020 was planned out. It was supposed to be built in Siberia. It was announced in 2014 officially, this climate controlled, you know, domed city, four and a half square kilometers, all that good stuff. But since 2016, the project lost the funding. What do you guys think? Should we bring back domes and just, you know, have a, a little personal bubble everywhere we go? Just lose the umbrella and live in a big glass ball forever over our city? I'd do it, that'd be kinda nice. Be like living in a Coca-Cola mist zone your entire life, just kinda like, ooh, this is nice. Number 10, the school. This person recounted their story of how their school seemed to suddenly change. They started a new school just a few years ago and remember exploring the school for the first time. They have a clear memory of walking up a flight of stairs to get to the second floor, seeing two water fountains to the left and the bathrooms to the right. They didn't return there for a while as it was on the opposite end of their classroom and they had no need to go there. The next school year, they walked down to that end of the school again and realized that the staircase was nowhere to be found and there was no second floor at all. Merely a blank wall remaining where the stairs had been. He wasn't the only one to remember it either, a few of his other friends having memories of the second floor. There was also no record or evidence of the second floor having potentially been demolished in that time. A potential glitch in the matrix putting a staircase where there had never actually been one. Number 9. Tomato soup. This person described their glitch in the matrix, also thinking it possible that they may have fallen into a parallel universe. Him and a close friend were working on a creative project together and they met each week at the same restaurant to go over the progress and discuss their work. The restaurant they always visited had a wall that was lined with jars of Caesar dressing and vodka sauce. Knowing that these were the exact things on the wall as they would examine them and even read out the calorie contents. Their father then passed away and in an attempt to get back to normal, he decided to meet up with the friend at the restaurant again the week after. But when he got there, he realized that the walls were now lined with jars of Caesar dressing and tomato soup instead of vodka sauce. While they could have just swapped them out, he says he asked the staff and they said they had never had vodka sauce on the wall. The person believing that the shock of their father's death caused them to experience a glitch in the matrix. Number 8. Different Language This person shared the fact that they had always been a sleep talker and even a a sleepwalker. His family apparently never being able to distinguish whether or not he was awake as he would always have his eyes open. He tells a story of how he had been close with his freshman roommate in college, him not minding the sleep talking as he would find it amusing to hear what the person had to say. One night he apparently started talking in his sleep about wanting a hamburger, the roommate replying that while well, everything was closed. The person insisted they needed a hamburger now and the conversation continued like this until he eventually fell back asleep. When he woke up, his roommate said to him, I didn't know you could speak Spanish. They had apparently had the entire conversation in Spanish, despite the person not actually knowing the language. The roommate had studied Spanish for many years and swears that he was totally fluent. The roommate's girlfriend who had been on FaceTime that night even backed him up, saying that she too had heard him speak in Spanish. Number 7. Outside Reality This person was on a trip with his friends floating down Lake Powell, going deeper and deeper into the canyon. He suddenly had a thought cross his head that it was so beautiful it looked fake, like it was specifically designed to be that way. As soon as he thought it, his friend turned to him and said, dude, it feels like we're in a movie and we're looking at movie props. It looks so fake. The two mildly freaking out about how they seemed to briefly share a brain cell. A little later on, he said he experienced what he describes as an altered state of consciousness, saying he felt like the facade of the human experience was drawn and all his friends looked like angelic beings enjoying earth. At the same time, the same friend turned to him and said, dude, look at our friends. They're so beautiful and alive, they look like angels. He says he believes they were able to see past the simulation and tap into the true reality. He also clarifies that they were both sober and it wasn't just the trip of a lifetime. Number six, zombie. This person who works in the admitting department of their local hospital believes they experienced a glitch where the past changed and 
somebody came back from the dead. A few years ago, one of their co-workers in another department passed away, him being responsible for processing the co-worker's obituary. The co-worker's daughter was good friends with their cousin, so they saw her at the co-worker's house after the funeral, holding a large ceremony for the mother. Then recently, the co-worker's daughter walked in, saying that her mom was in the ER. The person was obviously confused as they knew that the girl's mother was dead. Due to being so shocked, a co-worker had to step in and look up the girl's mother, showing it to be the woman who died years ago, but she was actually alive and in the hospital. The person not being able to find the obituary that they had processed. When they spoke later, the girl said that other people had also been coming up to her about the situation, saying that they too remember her mother dying. Number 5. Supernatural Children This person described how she believes her child glitched in the simulation, or perhaps was having her superhero origin story. Late at night, she heard her 2 year old daughter and 4 year old son talking and giggling in their bedroom past their bedtime, so she went in to check on them. When she stepped into the room past the gate, she could make out their dark forms, each on their bed and their voices coming from the two distinct places. As they were talking to each other, she felt something brush the back of her leg, but ignored it as she thought it was just one of their cats, still hearing her daughter's voice clearly coming from the bed as they spoke. She then turned around, expecting to see the cat to remove it from the room, but instead saw her two year old daughter suddenly behind her. She says she heard no footsteps and didn't see her daughter leave the bed, her voice still coming from that area. She believes that there was a glitch in the simulation, causing her daughter to teleport. Number 4. Body Swap This person tells a story of how someone they know apparently swapped bodies, a glitch causing them to appear as someone different. She and her husband had two neighbors across the street, another couple. The wife was a tiny blonde woman who would often wave across the street and they would chat occasionally. Eventually, the blonde woman went into labor and was taken to the hospital. When they returned, she saw a woman get out of the car with the baby, but instead it was a tall, large brunette with dark skin. Assuming that it was a relative who was helping with the baby, she and her husband brought over cookies and spoke to them. That's when she realized that the woman wasn't a relative, but the wife. Same name, personality, and everything except her body was now completely different. The poster's husband remembers the woman as having been blonde as well, them making jokes about having wife swapped at the hospital, much to the confusion of the neighbors. Number 3. The Moon This person was driving down the road with his mother when they both experienced the sky glitching. They were driving down a completely straight road to the theater on July 2nd when they were stopped at a red light, looking up and admiring the moon against the sunset. Just a few minutes later, they were going down that same straight road when they looked up again and saw that the moon had moved a significant distance, the mother noticing it as well and even looking scared at the thought. They then arrived at the parking lot and saw that the moon was still in the moved position, the person suddenly feeling the urge to look away. They say that they wanted to stare, but it felt like some sort of force was stopping them from looking. As soon as they felt like they could look again, the moon had suddenly moved back to the original position in just a few seconds, them and their mother with no idea how to explain what had happened. They looked it up on Twitter and only found one other person saying, did the moon just move? Number 2. The Town This person lives in a very rural area and as a result knows every town and road that's nearby. One day, he was going to a different county to look at a lawnmower, another area that he was very familiar with. Well, on the way there, he drove through a town that has never been there before. It went by the same name as a small community that was normally there, but instead of just a few houses, there were now stores, cafes, and street lights. Confused, he had to pull over and try and figure out what was going on. All the buildings looking brand new and clean, a contrast to the other towns surrounding it. He went into a cafe and asked the girl working there where he was, her responding with the same name of the small community. When he asked when all of it was built, she responded with the 1800s. Confused, he quickly left and continued on to get his lawnmower. And on the way back, all the new buildings and stores were gone again, only the small old community standing in its place. Number 1. Teleportation This person was driving home from work with their co-worker to the place that they were staying at. They had driven the route a few times already and knew it pretty well. It was about a 7 minute drive and was a straight path until a turn into the hotel. They had made it pretty far and were about a block away, the sign visible at the side of the road. But then suddenly, they weren't. They looked around and saw that they were on a highway about to take an 
exit ramp 20 minutes away from their destination. Both him and the co-worker having experienced the same thing. The time on the clock still reading the same time it had outside the hotel. Ever since then he says he feels disconnected from life and disoriented, like something is still wrong. A glitch through the simulation potentially making the person realize that everything is not as it seems. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Hoover Dam coincidence. We'll kick this list off on a grim note because why not? The Hoover Dam Okay, this massive accomplishment. Its first victim, sadly, was a man named J.G. Tierney. It was December 20th, 1922, and the official death toll from industrial accidents during the construction of the dam from 1921 to 1935 was sadly around the 200 number. It was a lot of deaths. It was pretty sad. The earliest and latest victims of the construction were both father and son. And if that's not coincidence enough, both of them died on the exact same day. They both passed on December 20th. J.G. Tierney sadly drowned while conducting surveys in the Colorado River, and then 13 years later, Patrick Tierney fell off an intake tower right before construction was complete. Grim start, but... Stay tuned, we have a lot more. Number nine, legendary musical neighbors. It's weird how similar some of your neighbors are, right? Like growing up, we had three Davids on our street. They all loved cutting their lawn at 7 a.m. What a coincidence, right? We all hated them. What a coincidence. Well, the 60s rock icon, Jimi Hendrix, and the 18th century composer, George Frederick Handel, they were both neighbors. A couple hundred years apart, but they were both neighbors indeed. They lived in 23 Brook Street and 25 Brook Street in London. What are the odds, right? Had George had been born 200 years later, we would have gotten the greatest collab of all time. Yeah, if you're a local, of course you'll know there's a site there now. It's a famous landmark. But in terms of coincidences, there's music in the air on Brock Street. Something's going on. Kind of want to walk by and see if I'm better at playing the, playing the flute. Maybe I can play the flute on that block, who knows. Number eight, same taxi, different tragedy. Okay, here's a dark one, buckle up folks, pun intended. Back in 1975, a man was sadly hit by a taxi in Bermuda. Now he of course sadly did not make it, all the while a passenger in the taxi witnessed the entire horrible event. Now that's life changing in itself, that's trauma, right? A year later though, the same driver was driving the same passenger, when all of a sudden, the taxi hits another civilian. That civilian just happened to be the initial victim's brother. Ugh, oh, horrible. This is some Final Destination stuff. I don't like it at all. Like this, what are the odds here, really? Let's move on to something a bit nicer, a bit. Number seven, same day, different vows. Okay, brightening up the mood a little bit, bringing us all back to happy land. CBC News reported this one. It's a little nicer of an ending. Fred and Lynette Dubendorf, husband and wife, they were taking a stroll down the beach with their dog, living up the life, right, the classic, when they noticed a message in a bottle had washed up on the shore. Now, personally, I wouldn't be too excited, right? I'd be a little concerned. I've seen cats away, you know? This message could go one of two ways. I have no idea. Like what's gonna be in here, right? Like help, 1876, you're like, oh no. But they opened it and inside they found wedding vows from another couple, Melody Kloska and Matt Bears. They had recently got married on a beach in Lake Michigan and word spread rather quickly. Thing is, their wedding date was the same as the couple who found the message. That was the bizarre coincidence here. So they took it as a sign that both pairs were meant to be and they sent a surprising letter to the lost couple's address. It's kind of nice, but it's also kind of creepy, you know? It'd be creepy on one hand. Hey, I found that message in a bottle. Cool, nice address, lovely home. Cool, I'll be back in a bit, hope it works out. Who puts their address on a message? That's just asking for disaster. Number six, one dollar marriage. The story of Esther and Paul Gratchen. Okay, this one goes out to all the single folks out there, okay? Keep hanging on. Love's coming, it's out there. See, Paul had decided on asking Esther to marry him, and around the same time, he caught himself about to spend a $1 bill on a sandwich. But the dollar bill randomly had the name Esther on it, okay? So he framed it, obviously this was a bizarre coincidence and Paul recognized this. And when he showed Esther later, she was speechless, right? She loved it, but she didn't tell Paul her side of the story until after they tied the knot. See, much earlier, when Esther and a group of friends were all going through a breakup, they wrote their names on a dollar bill and said, whoever brings this bill back to them, they'll marry that man. Now Esther didn't tell Paul the full story until after they got married because, well, she was worried this coincidence would have scared him away. Yeah, more than fair. Hey, I have a dollar bill and it's your name on it, so we have to get married now. You're like, what? Bye. Number five, Civil War coincidence. There's another war coincidence in this list, but I saved that for number one, because it's too good. But this one here is also pretty insane. The Civil War began in 1861 with the first Battle of Bull Run. The Bull Run is a stream that passes through the farm of a 46-year-old Wilmer McLean. Passes through his farm, right? The Bull Run is a stream that passes through the farm of a 46-year-old Wilmer McLean. This property was in Virginia. Now, of course, once the dust settled, the property was destroyed, so McLean left his home with his wife, and for nearly four years, the 
pair were considered safe while the war was otherwise changing history. Then in 1865, the war came to a close when Robert E. Lee surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant at the Apotomax Courthouse, which at the time was literally steps away from McLean's new property. Yeah, he saw the beginning and the end of the Civil War by accident. He saw it front row too, what are the odds? Number four, George D. Bryson. Back in the 50s, this story was spread all over Kentucky. Back in the 50s in Louisville, a man named George D. Bryson was checking into a hotel room. Now he walked up and asked if there was any mail for him, which on one hand is an excellent bit. I'm gonna do that next time I go to a hotel, for sure. Hey, got any mail? Classic, because you're just visiting the one time. There's no way there's gonna be mail. That's the joke, right? Except this time, there was. This time the hotel manager said, Yes, and there was in fact mail from the previous occupant of the room who had also had the same name, George D. Bryson. Yeah, what are the odds, right? I remember one time I met another McWaters and he was not related to me. And he also was not thrilled that we had the same name at all. It was the most bizarre thing. I was like, hey, can we talk about this? He's like, yeah, cool. I'm like, are you my brother? Let's, I don't want you to be anymore. Get out of here. Then I got Kyle and I was like, you know what? Change your name. Now you're my new brother. Replace this guy. Number three, Yanni and Laurel. Before we wrap up this curious list, we have to throw a fun recent one in as well. Remember this Yanni Laurel thing back in 2018? I only heard Yanni for like two weeks straight. I heard Yanni. That's it. For two weeks, guaranteed. I was determined that it was Yanni, okay? And then one day I listened and it was Laurel. And then I couldn't go back. It was just Laurel all of a sudden. Like it immediately just changed. It was a completely different word. I felt sick. I was like, is this real life? How is this happening? This got everybody talking. What is this phenomenon that happens? Same with the dress mishap. What is going on? Well, many believe these viral illusions are proof that we're living in a simulation. Yeah, these arguments, you know, the dress is blue, no, it's white. These situations prove that we perceive reality in our own individual way. Everybody is living an individual perceived reality. So sometimes it doesn't always align. Sometimes we hear what we want to hear. Sometimes we hear Yanni, and then sometimes we hear Laurel, and it's completely different for some reason. I can't go back now, it's the worst. God, I hated this so much. The dress was back in 2015, then Yanni Laurel was 2018. I don't know, we're due for another glitch in the matrix any day now. I come back next week, I have a different first name all of a sudden, you're like, what? Number two, Miss Unsinkable. It's one thing to narrowly miss a natural disaster or a massive accident, but to not miss a tragedy three times in a row, that sounds like a curse, if you ask me. That's for sure a curse. Violet Jessup, this brave soul, survived three major ship disasters in history. She was born in 1887 in Argentina, and Jessup contracted tuberculosis at a young age and wasn't expected to live longer than a few months. She beat those odds and lived a healthy, relatively long life, which is shocking considering what I'm I'm about to tell you. Violet, first of all, had a hard time getting hired as a stewardess on a ship because her youth and good looks were feared to distract crew and passengers. Yeah, you're too good looking to work on a ship. Welcome to the 1900s, I guess. Eventually, she got hired in 1910 to work aboard the HMS Olympic. Now, a year later, the Olympic collided with HMS Hawk and the ship barely made it to shore. It was a tragedy, it was a huge disaster. Violet then served as a nurse aboard the Britannic right before World War I. The ship then collided with a German mine and Violet jumped overboard and somehow survived with a fractured skull in the water and swam to safety. Afterwards, Violet worked on the Titanic and on April 14th, 1912, she escaped another disaster on lifeboat 16. I mean, like the odds that you survive three times in a row is one thing, but to experience three of those in a row, Huh. And finally, number one, World War I soldiers. We have to finish on a grim note because this one is one of the most bizarre, in my opinion. When the First World War ended, the amount of British lives lost were around one million souls. The first reported casualty of World War I was a soldier named John Parr. And then after a countless number of lives were lost, the last soldier to die was a man named George Edwin Ellison. Now both heroes' resting places are both in the St. Symphorian Military Cemetery, and they just happen to be 15 feet apart. And of course, this was not planned, nor were any of the entries on our list. It's just another bizarre coincidence that was discovered after the fact. In our number 10 spot, we have the same shirt. In this instance, a man was out at a restaurant and was about to eat a meal when he discovered something weird. The man seated behind him had the same shirt as him. But if you think that's funny and a bit strange, imagine a third man seated in the seat behind the second guy and he had the same shirt on too. What are the odds? that three people with the same shirt would be seated in three consecutive tables, one after the other, in the same place. Definitely a glitch in the universe.
hours. In our number nine spot, we have Time Warp. This is a story told by a Reddit user who took the same route to get to work every single day. This route would be 45 minutes there and 45 minutes back. With traffic, it was a bit more. So, anyways, it of course blew his mind when one day he went the same route to work and got there in 30 minutes, which he says is impossible. He checked his phone and sure enough, he saw a text from 30 minutes prior about leaving the house. Till this day, he is convinced that somehow he went through a glitch in the matrix. This actually has happened to me before, but it was as if I was sleeping on my drive home as I don't remember getting from one place to the other. Maybe it's best I just don't drive. In our number eight spot, we have the triple van. If you thought the same t-shirt was weird, then what about the same red van? That's the same make, year, and model, all in a lineup, one after the other at a toll booth. Mind blown. If that is not a glitch in the universe, then I don't know what is. Unless they are all besties who have the same things and decided to get the same cars, this is truly wild. What do you think? Is this proof that we probably live in a simulation? Let me know in the comment section below. In our number seven spot, we have Couple Swap. I love this one as it is truly very, very strange. In this photo, you see two couples at the same restaurant and they appear to be wearing the opposite of each other, but they look quite similar. The man on one side is wearing pink and the man on the other side is wearing green. The woman on one side is wearing pink and the woman on the other side is wearing green. They are the exact same shades of these two colors and what makes this picture even weirder is that the men both have white hair and the woman both have black hair. If you were to put a mirror between them, it would almost be like they are from different opposite dimensions. In our number six spot, we have the three blondes. Another photo that I'm sure is proof that we are living in the matrix, y'all. This is a photo of three women on a bus that have the same 80s blonde blowout, are wearing black leather jackets and blue jeans. Also, they are all seemingly sitting the same. Whoa, this is wild to me. I hope someone on the bus pointed this out to them so they could all meet their real life doppelgangers. Did three different versions of the same woman from different dimensions collide for this one bus ride? I sure hope so. In our number five spot, we have the remote. This story sounds a little bit more more like they may be housing a ghost rather than it was a matrix glitch, but since the latter is what this Reddit user believes, I'll leave that up to you to decide. Apparently, a woman and her husband lost their TV remote and could not find it anywhere that they decided to order a new one, naturally. On the day the remote was being dropped off, this woman went to her door to get the remote from the delivery person, brought it inside, went to her couch to sit down and watch TV, only to look down and see her old remote sitting in the middle of the carpet in front of the TV. What? That's too crazy to not be a ghost, right? I don't know, maybe it was a matrix glitch. Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. In our number four spot, we have the milk cartons. This one is so movie-like, it's creepy. <laughs> a man was pouring himself a cup of tea, and as always, he put some milk in his tea. He heard the doorbell ring, so he put the milk in the fridge and then went to answer the door. When he came out, he saw the milk beside his tea. He thought, well, that's weird. I thought I put the milk in the fridge. So he goes to put the milk in the fridge and lo and behold, there are two milk cartons. He swears that he never bought a second milk. Whoa, this was definitely a glitch of the matrix. Please universe, let me experience something like this in my life. In our number three spot, we have the prediction. This Reddit user was 40 years old and recently divorced and just chatting to an employee at the time when she suddenly saw a flash in her mind of her being married to this employee and with two kids and they were living somewhere hot. Flash forward to five years in the future where she is actually married to this guy, has two kids, and he just recently got a promotion to move to the Middle East. Is this one a glitch or a psychic prediction? And are glitches just psychic predictions? I think possibly yes, but curious to know your thoughts. In our number two spot, we have two women eat times 
three. In this photo, there appears to be two women in three consecutive booths, one after the other, and they are each wearing the same color or a version of the shade in the exact place. Each woman seems to have similar hairstyles, with the color only changing slightly due to the age. Many people have speculated that the picture shows us three alternate reality dimensions where one of the women is older or younger, her hair is a bit shorter, etc. And I would have to agree. How is this even real? How did all of these women choose the same restaurant and how are they seated beside each other? Huh? Clearly this photo is a blip in the matrix and showing us three realities. In our number one spot we have the bald spots. <laughs> this photo is crazy. So crazy that it just had to be in first. What are the odds of five men with the same bald spot all sitting on the same bus in a seat that is one after the other? How? Something happened in the matrix that day, clearly, and it created this blip. This is honestly magical to look at. Seeing this just brought the biggest smile to my face and put me in a state of wonder about the mysteries of the world that are yet to be discovered. I hope it did the same for you. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Mandela Effect. The Mandela Effect began being widely recognized when people began to swear that they could remember Nelson Mandela passing away in the 1980s. This is of course weird since he actually passed away in 2013. This is obviously a huge time discrepancy, so people were very confused. This is of course how it got the name, the Mandela Effect, and it basically is the theory that whoever is responsible for this simulation we live in has gone back and changed some things. There is an alternate belief that the Mandela effect shows that there are multiple universes or alternate realities, and this is just a result of us crossing from one to another. Other really famous cases of the Mandela effect are the Bernstein Bears, where some people swear it used to be spelled with the ending being S-T-E-I-N, while all copies are now spelled S-T-A-I-N, or the popular peanut butter brand called Jif, there are people who swear it used to be called Jiffy. This one, however, is my personal favorite. There are people who remember there being a movie called Shazam where Sinbad played a genie. A lot of people speculate, though, that they are just getting it mixed up with a movie where Shaq played a genie called Kazam. I definitely remember the Bernstein Bears one and the Shazam one, so I just might be a believer that this all really is a simulation. At number nine, aliens. Over the years, we've spent billions of dollars trying to get to outer space and trying to find signs of extraterrestrial life or any past lives on other planets. Despite all of our best efforts, we haven't been able to find any aliens. This theory goes that the reason we haven't been able to find aliens is either because they're the ones running the simulation in the first place, or it's possible that if they are part of the simulation, they may be more advanced than us and have possibly found a way to escape. It's also possible that maybe the computer just doesn't have enough RAM to simulate another planet civilization. This is all to say that maybe if we were able to find aliens, then we'd finally get the answers that we're looking for. In our number eight spot today, we have a computer virus in a DNA strand. Before I dive into this one guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far because it really helps us out. In 2017, a group of researchers from different scientific backgrounds at the University of Washington proved that they were able to put computer code into DNA strands. My brain is honestly unable to even comprehend this, but apparently it's true. The whole goal of the research was to be able to prove that computers that work in gene sequencing were very vulnerable to cyber attack. It seems as though they may have proved a little bit more than what they intended. I'm truthful not very familiar with DNA strands or computer viruses, so I don't really know what this means other than the fact that it's entirely possible what we perceive as our biological makeup may really just be some computer code after all. If this is the case, I'm really upset that whoever is controlling our simulation didn't just make us at least a little bit more resilient. At number seven, experimentation. You know how it seems like the world is always on the brink of absolute chaos? 
environmentally we are always just one wrong move from ending humanity as we know it. Certainly a bit stressful for us, but maybe this is on purpose. It is possible that we may have been created as a simulation in order to help whoever created us figure out their own climate and environmental problems. It would be crazy because if they can make a simulation that feels this real, then surely they can figure out their own problems too, but that might not be necessarily true. If we really are in a simulation, they may have created us to be better at that sort of thing than they are. It is possible that if we solve enough of their problems, then they might just come back to Earth or whatever planet we end up on in order to reap the benefits from our hardworking scientists. In our number six spot today, we have no evidence. This one is actually a little frustrating to be honest because it should be so simple. This is just the theory that it is most likely we are living in a simulation due to the fact that we absolutely cannot prove that we aren't. As much as a lot of us would like to believe that we aren't, or maybe it comes down to the fact that we can't let go of our egos enough in order to be able to believe, anything we think or any evidence we think we have would have all been simulated. If we do in fact live in a simulation, it is possible that whoever created it would prefer that we didn't come to the realization that our reality isn't ours at all. I'm not gonna lie, this whole theory is actually kind of frightening because it is most likely that we won't actually ever know the truth. At number five, it's all a joke. Sometimes things just happen in our world that are just weird. Who could have predicted that Donald Trump would become president? Or the time that the Patriots were down 28 to three in the Super Bowl and came back to win the whole game? Or that weird Oscars envelope mix up that was just really, really awkward. Anyway, this is all to say that weird things happen in our world all the time. Some things that no one quite saw coming and quite honestly seem kind of strange. This theory goes that whoever made our simulation may just want to have a little bit of fun. Or maybe our simulation is malfunctioning and they're trying to get us back on track. Either way, this could be an explanation for those weird things that just seem to happen. In our number four spot today, we have the Goldilocks zone. You know how we are located in such a great spot in our solar system? Just far enough from the sun that we don't absolutely burn up, but close enough that the sun helps sustain our life. This is what is commonly referred to as the Goldilocks zone since it is just right. This lends well into the idea that we live in a simulation because of the fact that whoever created us most likely wants us to be able to survive, so of course they would place us in the most ideal location for life. I would definitely like to ask them why they made the sun so harmful as well, because that seems like an oversight, but I am willing to look past it for now, considering there isn't anything I can do to change that. At number three, math is a lie. You know how we have rules, like the laws of physics, or just the scientific and mathematical rules that our world just seems to follow that we had to figure out? Well, some people believe that those laws are proof of us living in a simulation. If we lived in a video game, at some point, we would also discover that there are rigid rules that cannot be broken, no matter how hard you tried, almost like it is mathematical or scientific. So something like the speed of light, which is the fastest rate a particle can travel in our world, might just be the time it takes to transmit information in our simulation. All of the rules we think we've figured out might just be more proof that we do indeed live in a simulation. In our number two spot today, we have our own simulations. This one has to do with what we are doing that could possibly prove the existence of a simulation. As humans, we are getting better and better at creating our own simulations. In 2014, the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics connected 8,000 computers to create a 350 million light year simulation of our universe and digitally aged it over 13 billion years. Or for a more simple example, let's take The Sims. This franchise the franchise sold over 125 million copies in its first decade, so it shows that we are absolutely interested in creating our own simulations. If we are this interested in it, why would we assume that whatever other forms of life exist out there aren't also as interested as we are? This one might make you think next time before you decide to delete the ladder to get out of the swimming pool in your Sims world. And finally, at number one, we are the simulation. This one is pretty simple, but also might be a little confusing. We all live in our own reality and no two are the same. Whatever we perceive in the world is slightly simulated by our own brains. What I mean by this is that we use our past and our memories to process information that we are currently receiving, whether we do it consciously or not. Who is to say that anything we see looks the same to anyone else or anything we taste tastes the same to anyone else? We all live in our own little world and that in itself might be proof that we are in a simulation. There is no true reality 
reality that we share 100%. It is all based on the individual. At number 10, we have the Fermi Paradox. This theory has some holes, but it is still very interesting, so it was a perfect way to start out this list. We live in a universe that spans an unfathomable distance and has so many planets in them, you couldn't count them even if you were really good at counting. So, some of them are much older than ours, so that means that their life would be way more advanced. So why on earth have we never heard of any of these aliens? Why have they not come out of the stars to see us? Well, this could be because we have a government that is hiding them from us, or it could be because we are in a simulated world and there's no benefit to simulating life on other planets. That could mean that the processing power and whatever we're hooked up to just isn't strong enough. We need to get a rig that is way better if we wanted some alien life to come in. We've got to invest in a new like graphics card and stuff. And number nine, we have the Mandela effect. You might have heard of this. This is where people misremember something from the past. Now people misremembering things happens all the time. What's the big deal? But the Mandela effect is literally thousands of people remembering it a different way. It's called the Mandela effect because there are thousands of people, maybe even millions, who remember Nelson Mandela dying in the 80s. But he didn't die in the 80s. This dude lived until he was an old man. Or am I remembering it wrong? Are the other people right? The reason why this could be proof of a simulation is because these slight mistakes could show some sort of human error or a glitch in the system on the side of the people who are running the simulation. Someone sat down on the wrong button and was like, oh, I killed Nelson Mandela. I'm gonna get written up for this for sure. God damn, that wasn't supposed to happen. At number eight, we have Deja Vu. If you haven't seen The Matrix, then what are you doing with your life? It's not only one of the most amazing movies that showcases what could happen if AI gets out of control, but it also is one of the greatest action movies of all time. And there's a fourth one coming, so you need to catch up on everything. Now, The Matrix was one of the first movies to showcase the simulation idea. And evidence of The Matrix or something changing in The Matrix was deja vu. If you saw something repeat itself, it meant that you were in the simulation and that things were about to get crazy. Now, how does this translate to the real world? What if the Matrix wasn't so much a movie, but it was a message? What if the people outside of the simulation wanted us to figure it out and see if any people would use the hints laid throughout the movie as a way to actually break free from this digital prison? There could be clues throughout that movie that showcase all the signs of us being in a world of ones and zeros. Either that, I'm starting to look like Charlie from It Was Always Sunny with the strings and paper, and I'm like, eh. At number seven, we have simulation loop. We are already starting to see what is called a simulation loop. We live in a simulated society. Many things we create are larger versions of smaller things. Planes are simulations of birds. Tanks are simulations of beetles. As we create what we think is better versions of what already exists. Now we could be getting close to a loop of creating a world which is more interesting than our own. Virtual reality has started to take the world by storm. And in it we will build worlds that are far more superior to our own. Worlds where people can fly, everyone is rich, you don't get sick and everyone can res their buddy because they got the ray gun. Now, some people theorize that we have done this before and we are currently living in a previously created simulation and we might be headed into another loop in the near future and go into a simulation again. So it's like simulation on simulation, inception, in simulation. Oh, I'm not gonna work on that, I made that word up, I'm sorry. At number six, we have the double slit experiment. This was an experiment where you take a panel of copper plate with two slits in it and then you fire electrons at it to see how the electrons interact on the other side. Do they move through in waves or particles? The first time this experiment was performed, the electrons seemed as though they were moving through in particles. The scientists wanted to see this in action, so they set up a device to observe this. And when the electrons were under observation, they moved in waves. So they did the test again without the observation, and they went back to particles, meaning that the electrons would change how they interacted based on whether or not they were being observed. If this was a simulation, much like a video game, the processing power would increase on certain areas when you were looking at them, which would explain how this changed the electron activity. Obviously, it's probably a lot smarter explanation than that, but I'm going with the simulation one because I am not smart. At number five, we have Elon Musk said so. Come on, you can't argue with this dude. He's one of the smartest, richest people around. If anyone knew we were in a simulation, it would be this guy. He probably sees the Matrix all the time. He just doesn't want to freak us out by letting us know that there is a 100% chance we are in a simulation by letting us know that there's a 100% chance we are in a simulation. Also, if anyone was on the up and up on whether or not we are in a simulation, it would be billionaires. Not because they paid someone to figure it out, but because they clearly have cracked some sort of code and know how the world works and are doing something we don't understand 
understand. If you had that kind of knowledge, you would be able to get ahead in the game. But Elon has made the theory of a simulation world so popular, so is he our digital messiah or is he just a little bit crazy and has a lot of money? And number four we have, that's why we have ghosts. Now this seems like I'm trying to explain a myth with a crazy explanation, but that is why you guys come here. We want to get a little crazy with our theories because that is way more fun. Just walking around in our own reality, we don't want to do that, jeez. But what if ghosts and hauntings have nothing to do with ghosts, but they are glitchy parts of our own reality? reality. Like a haunted house is just basically Fallout 76. Ghosts are floating around doing the T pose, freaking everyone out. Demons, werewolves, all that sort of spooky stuff that we've always heard about. Myths, monsters, and creatures that could all kill us. That's just DLC that the public didn't like and then they just patched it out. And number three, we have creative purpose theory. Why do we exist? Some people think it's to serve God. Other people think it's just to have fun. Other people think there is no purpose at all. That we just live and die to get farted out into the earth and never heard from again. But what if we had a much greater purpose to create to make something so smart and so interesting we couldn't bear to compete with it as we get closer and closer to making AI it seems that a self-aware learning adapting intelligence that has the power of the internet in its mind would be too much for us to compete with it would be a living God that we made and we should be pretty proud of ourselves for doing it but what if that is our purpose to make a being that is all-knowing and able to move through the universe consume knowledge and become even more powerful all without needing to eat, sleep, procreate or even take breaks. What if we already did this and now we're living inside this endless machine and the only reason it keeps us alive in this falsified world is because it wants to keep learning from us. Well if that's the case download me some abs because it's almost beach season. And number two we have computer viruses for people. DNA is a type of code much like the code that makes up computers. So could a virus from a computer get into someone's DNA somehow. Most of you probably think that is impossible, but there was a group at the University of Washington who might prove you wrong. Now I want to start off by saying you can't get sick from a computer. The virus that got put into human DNA cannot affect people. Don't freak out. But in 2017 this group found out that you could put malware into a strand of DNA. It was a very interesting experiment and it might have worked because all of our DNA is actually code and we are actually made up of ones and zeros and nothing Things real, ah, go rob someone. Don't actually do that. And for our number one spot, we have the Fibonacci sequence. This is gonna be some math stuff, so if you guys aren't good at math, don't worry, because I suck at math too, and I had to find a dumbed down explanation so I could understand it, and I'm gonna be bringing you an even dumber version right out of my mouth. The Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers where the totals equal the numbers before added together. So starting with zero, we have zero plus one equals one. One plus two equals three, two plus three equals five, three plus five equals eight, and so on and so forth, with the sequence looking like zero, one, one, two, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, and it goes on like that forever. Now what does this have to do with simulation? Well this sequence shows up in a lot of math and also a lot of nature. Many plants and other natural forming things have perfect Fibonacci sequences inside of them, almost like they were programmed from a computer. This could just be the most efficient way to make life and cells are living math, or could we all be in an auto create version of life and that's how the world is built in a computer and it's just like boop they hit a button and it makes everything. Starting off let's start at number 10 Tyson fight glitch. Alright this one takes place in 1995 and it may be a glitch but it also could be a time traveler. Who knows both are always fun. This video is from a Mike Tyson fight and while Tyson is of course the star the center of attention in this entire video there is a person in the audience who has us scratching our heads when we look back and watch. This fight like I said takes place in 1995 but when you peek into the audience, it appears as though someone is taking their own video on a cell phone or some sort of smartphone. This gadget that they're holding doesn't look like most cameras from the time and very closely resembles our smartphone cameras from today. With you know, the lens not being in the center but more off to the side. Imagine having this video on your phone in 1995 with like, hi world star, I'd like to deposit a video. It's gonna get me a lot of views, it's great, it's a really good one. Number nine, the reflection glitch. This video comes from TikTok of course and it shows one very confused driver in traffic. Yeah, this is more than fair. This man started filming in a car that was slightly ahead of him in the next lane because he noticed something was off. Again, I wouldn't advise you to pull out your phone and start filming while you're driving, but 
luckily we got this video. The man is in a convertible and his reflection can be seen in one of his side mirrors, that's very normal. But you can also see that the man is moving his head around in this car, which is normal. But what isn't normal is the fact that his reflection is not moving along with him. So, could be a vampire, could be a shapeshifter, could be a ghost, I have no idea. It's really one of those things that you have to see to believe. Check it out. Number eight, plane glitch. Planes are wild, I have no idea how they work at all, they just they stay up there somehow, okay. Sometimes they just look like they're floating on the exact same spot and it's so trippy. But this one here, this one is it's pretty weird. This video comes from Moscow and it shows what looks like a plane completely stuck in midair. Like, really stuck. Check it out. <laughs> Imagine just casually driving down the road and then you saw this just frozen in the, in the sky, I would think. So many scary things. I guess the only appropriate response here would be to capture it on video because how else would you tell a coworker about this? You know what I mean? Without sounding crazy. I'm gonna assume that this is some sort of optical illusion or some sort of wind trick here, but it's just very strange to see a plane that is that close to the ground that isn't either ascending or descending. It's just kind of there. Is it possible that the clear skies made it more difficult to see the movement of the plane? I don't know, someone help me out in the comments down below because I can't sleep. Number seven, another plane glitch. This video comes from a flight to Enbro, which is a flight that I've done many times myself. It's beautiful. A passenger began taking a video of the propeller on the side of the plane when they caught this strange glitch in the matrix. more than fair. This propeller is of course moving, or else, well, we'd probably know, but it appears as though it is not. How fun is that? It's a fun, scary optical illusion when you're thousands of feet into the air. This is due to the speed of the propeller and the camera's shutter speed, you know, being synchronized, looking a little bit funky. Now we see this often with helicopters, but to see it in a plane that high up from your point of view, that's a bit different. That's a bit more jarring. Number six, Yanni and Laurel. Remember this Yanni Laurel thing back in 2018? I'm still talking about it. It still f***ed me up. I heard Yanni for like two weeks and and then one day I listened back and then it was Laurel all of a sudden. And then my life changed forever. Couldn't go back. This got everybody talking. What is this phenomenon that happens? Is this a glitch in the matrix? How can you hear one thing and then a completely different sound moments later? The dress fiasco as well. Black and blue, white and gold. We see it often. What the hell is actually happening here? Laurel. 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 While many believe that these viral illusions are proof that we're living in a simulation. And while these arguments are fun, they really just prove that we perceive reality in our own individual way. Everybody is living an individually perceived reality, so sometimes it doesn't align across the board. Sometimes I hear Laurel, while you hear Yanni. And now I can't go back, and now I always hear that stuck in my head. It's just Laurel. God, I hated this. Number five, rain glitch. This one comes from Paris, when a man decided to take this video one day when the weather was acting up. Anytime you film weather, you always know it's gonna be a bad time. First of all, it's not abnormal for rain to hit one part of a city while other parts stay dry with clear skies. I've been there before. It's trippy, it's kind of fun, whatever. But this one here, this one takes the cake. It's just raining in one spot, like literally one specific spot, one tiny spot is absolutely getting poured down on seemingly out of nowhere. But everywhere else is not. It's just a casual, nice day. Now at first I thought that maybe someone from above was pouring water, maybe, because that's what people do, I guess, in their spare time. But the video does does pan up and you see nothing above this random rainfall, so we can check that off our boxes. If there's a scientific explanation for this, please tell me in the comments, because again, I have no idea what's going on here. I can't help you. All I have to say is hit the thumbs up, you know, all that good shit, but a scientist, please help me in the comments. Number four, manhole cover glitch. I'm not sure if these have the same name in every country or whatever, but this video is in reference to a manhole cover. You know those really heavy metal lids that go on top of holes on the ground that leads to sewers? I don't know, Mario stomps on them in Mario Sunshine, and then he pops up somewhere else in the city. Those. They're designed to be extremely heavy, so of course people can't just waltz into the sewer systems whenever they feel like it, which is probably a good thing. This isn't the Victorian era anymore, we don't want to be down there. But this video would make it seem like otherwise. This video is very short, but it shows one of these covers just bouncing up and down as though it's one, lightweight, and two, there's air coming up from underneath it, just bouncing it around. It would take a lot of air to do this, considering the typical cover weighs 250 pounds.
This reminds me of the end of As Above, So Below. That's a terrifying movie. That's, I don't wanna see that moving around at all. Thank you. Number three, people frozen in time. In September 2019, a Buffalo, New York resident caught this extremely eerie and uncomfortable glitch in the matrix. A woman was driving past a park when she needed to take out her camera and record what was going on because it looked that messed up. It's, I mean, fair, more than, more than fair. A bunch of people in the park were just completely frozen still. They were just like, out of nowhere. And it wasn't like a group of people in the park who were doing like a social experiment or like some sort of weird piece of performance art, anything like that that involved a lot of people or something being completely still. I don't know, it's like a flash mob that doesn't move. Is that a thing? That's the only explanation that I can think of. A flash mob that doesn't dance or move. They're like three, two, one. The most boring flash mob on the planet. It reminds me of the scene in Logan when everybody's stuck. That's terrifying. That's a situation you don't want to be part of. That's not good. Yeah, do you see what I mean by this being the creepiest video ever? Everyone's just stuck standing where they are. What's going on here? Have you seen this? Someone tell me. I, I need answers down there. I need answers right now and photos of Spider-Man. Number two, are birds real? Apparently there's a huge thing going on right now where people don't believe that birds are real. There's thousands of people who are gathering outside and protesting against birds. I don't know what's going on. This glitch comes from a Reddit user called AmerXPOO from the time that they captured some birds behaving very strangely. So think what you want, but I think birds are real, whatever. I'll let you take a look at the clip first and then we'll talk shop afterwards. When I first watched this, I 100% thought that it was photoshopped. I truly cannot believe that I was seeing this because there's just no way, right? From what you're seeing, these are animals. From the coordination of the flying all the way to the ripples of the color changes, I thought this was fake the entire time. It's not. As it turns out, this is actually uh, perfectly uh, explainable. This is called a murmur, and it basically is a defensive posture that birds take. Truly one of the coolest things that I've ever seen, hence why I thought that it was unbelievable. And there are more videos of it that you can actually look up, and I implore you to because it's fascinating. This is like bird choreography. This is next level. People don't believe that birds are real, and videos like this make me agree. Yeah, fair. One point for the bird Gryffindor. Are seagulls real? Pigeons aren't real. Pigeons are fucking weird. And finally, number one, twins named Jim. Back in 1979, a set of twins were reunited. They were 39 at the time, and this was, of course, a big moment in their lives because for 37 years, they barely knew of each other's existence. Yeah, that's pretty sad. When they did finally meet, the long-lost twins had more in common than anybody ever thought. For starters, both had been named Jim. I spoiled that one in the fun title there, but both of these gyms, they loved math and carpentry, okay? Both also had jobs in security, okay? Their ex-wives were both named Linda, okay? And they've since both married a woman named Betty. That's so many coincidences, I have no idea what's going on. Imagine meeting another you and he's like, oh yeah, I love knitting and Autobots. What are the odds? No way, that's way too eerie. That's a glitch in the Matrix or an alien clone. Something's not right here. I don't know. I'm glad you guys found each other, but... Maybe you weren't supposed to, you know what I mean? I've seen some movies, I've seen Black Mirror, that's all I'm saying.